tropical sunshine, carnival, even a spot of gambling. In the 1930s and 40s, Cuba was a playground for American travelers. You see a uniformity in the, in the tour buses. Now, after half a century of frozen relations, U.S. tour companies are coming back. Smart Tours in New York is getting ready to start its first trips to Cuba in April. Well, demand was already through the roof. Uh, when, from our existing client base alone, we, we sold out of, uh, of a couple months of departures within a matter of hours. The tours went on sale in November last year, even before the U.S. president announced travel restrictions would be relaxed. There was a lot of confusion about what's possible with travel to Cuba from, from the U.S. You can't go there as a tourist and just do touristy leisure activities. Too soon, perhaps, to break out the maracas, but there is one key reason to celebrate. U.S. tour companies no longer need a special license to travel to Cuba. Smart Tours had only just received theirs when the policy was lifted. We should probably frame it. Now your travel just needs to fit into one of 12 categories, including family visits, journalistic activity, or educational activities. The rules are relatively simple. They just need to follow what we've said uh, because it is still a very serious sanctions program that is implemented by an act of Congress. Still, the travel industry is racing to meet the new demand. The U.S. Tour Operators Association says 20 out of its 52 members currently operate tours to Cuba. Online booking site Kayak now includes Cuba in its searches. And last week saw the first direct charter flight between New York and Havana in half a century. Less bureaucracy combined with a lot of pent-up demand makes Cuba an irresistible business opportunity for many companies here in the United States. The process, though, is still far from simple. So for those heading into this new market, it pays to go carefully.